One of the most common investing mistakes that I see people making is that they do not take the time to make an estimation of what kind of return a business or a stock is likely to generate for them in the future. So many people will focus on the uh, focus their analysis on figuring out if a business is great. So making sure it has competitive advantages or looking at the management team to see if their interests are aligned uh, with the investors, but they do not spend any time thinking about the price that they pay. Many people believe that if you just invest in a great company, it does not matter what price you pay. And for those people, when they invest in those companies, the problem is that they have no idea what the future return is going to be. It could be 10%, it could be 15%, it could be 3%, it could be negative 5%. So uh, in today's video, I want to share with you uh, how you can calculate the expected return of a great business that you've analyzed. So how can you figure out or come up with an estimation of what kind of return you are likely going to make out of that business? I'm going to show you a full example and then also how you can apply the expected return, not just calculate what it is, but how you should then use that, interpret the expected return and then make investment decisions based off your calculation. But first, let me just explain what expected return is. And it's pretty self-explanatory. It's kind of in the name, but uh, just to give you an overview, I guess a summary of what expected return is, uh, when we calculate expected return, we are trying to come up with an estimation of what the long-term return of a business or a stock is likely to be if we purchased it, if we invested at the current stock price. So for example, we take company A and if we were to invest in that business today, what return are we likely going to make out of that business if we held it for the next 10 years and beyond? And I want to stress early in this video that this is an estimation, okay? It's an estimation based on your understanding of the business and how thoroughly you've analyzed that business. Because ultimately, the expected return that you calculate in today's video is going to be based on your projections, your analysis of the cash flows that that business can produce. So prior to this video, you need to have done thorough analysis. You need to have figured out what is a likely growth rate for ca cash flows in the future and therefore coming up with a model for what their cash flow growth and how their cash flows will change over time. And based on that, we can work backwards and figure out uh, what the expected return is likely going to be depending on the price that we pay today. And that is exactly what the expected return is supposed to show us. And another thing to note is that even after you do a thorough analysis of a business, even if you spent uh, hundreds of hours and weeks and months studying a company and learning everything about its industry and what are the typical cycles that cash flow sort of go through for businesses in that industry, even if you do all of that, the business is still at the mercy of the randomness of the world. Things happen, things change, uh, legislation changes, there's world wars, there's pandemics, there's all kinds of things that happen that are unpredictable. And as a result, even when we do a very, very solid and analytical and rational expected return calculation, we need to always aim for a return that is higher than the return we desire. So for example, I typically am looking to make a 15% return on my investments, but that doesn't mean that I'm looking for an expected return in a business of 15%. I'm always looking for an expected return that is substantially higher than 15% to allow for the randomness that could happen and well, that is going to happen uh, and things that impact that business that I could not foresee or that anyone could not foresee. And as a result, uh, I will be protecting my downside by aiming higher than uh, the return that I ultimately want to make, which is 15%. Additionally, as I alluded to earlier in this video, you cannot calculate, you cannot calculate the expected return of a business that you have not yet thoroughly analyzed, okay? So uh, this channel, if you're new around here, is dedicated to providing you with the tools and the education required in order for you to do a thorough analysis of a business. Uh, and that thorough analysis includes making sure we deeply understand the business, identifying competitive advantages that will allow the business to thrive over the long term. It includes looking at management in a number of different ways to make sure that the people who are making decisions on our behalf are actually making good decisions and doing them in the best interest of us. So if you're new around here and you're new to stock analysis, then I highly recommend you check out a playlist that I have that has about 15 videos in it that goes through the analysis strategy, the, the principles that I use in order to analyze a business and avoid bad investments and only make good investments. So 
I, if you're new around here, I highly recommend that you check that out first. So I'll leave it down in the description below. I'll also leave a card to it that should pop up somewhere here on the screen uh, right about now. Uh, but I highly recommend you check that out first because again, it is super important that you have thoroughly analyzed the business before you try and calculate expected return. But if you have gone through the process of analyzing a business or a few different businesses that are on your watch list, then you would have already gone through the process of making some predictions or some estimations about what the future cash flows of those businesses is likely going to be or conservatively can be. And based on those future cash flows, we can use that and reverse engineer the discounted cash flow in my spreadsheet, which I'll show you later in this video. We can reverse engineer that in order to figure out what is the current stock price offering us today. If we purchase that great business that we've analyzed today, what return are we likely going to make over the long term? And based on that, we can figure out should we wait for the price to fall a little bit further, or we can talk about whether you should be making an investment in a different company that's also in your watch list. So now let's jump over to my computer and I'll walk you through how to calculate the expected return of a business that you've analyzed in my spreadsheet. So um, for those who don't know, my spreadsheet is a free resource that you can use. It's a tool that you can use in your analysis. Uh, it's linked down in the description below. Again, it's completely free. So go download it if you haven't already. Uh, but let's jump over to my computer and let's go through a full example of calculating the expected return. All right, so we are over here in my free spreadsheet. And uh, again, if you want to get it, you can via the link in the description below. It's completely free. So you can download it and follow along if you're interested. Um, but the company that we're going to use as an example here is Facebook. So um, I've done a complete analysis of Facebook. I did it quite a while ago. And of course, um, since it's a business in my portfolio, I've been constantly keeping up with it. Uh, but this is the full analysis report that I did uh, on Facebook. And uh, if you don't know, uh, you can get access to these full stock analysis reports uh, and presentations to be used as case studies in uh, supporting your education uh, as a student of Learn by Example, if you're interested. So that's something that uh, is also linked down in the description below if you want to learn more information about uh, getting access to these. But from the summary for this analysis, you can see that uh, I gave it a tick for management and moat. Uh, it was really just a matter of price. I gave price a maybe. So uh, when there was this uh, market sort of uh, correction or crash that happened uh, in March, uh, I was sort of curious about what, what the expected return was for Facebook and whether I should add some more of it to my portfolio. So uh, if we come over to the uh, discounted cash flow slide uh, sheet here, I should say, uh, I've entered in uh, my expected growth rates, uh, my projections of their cash flows in the future, ranging from 10% to 18% per year uh, for the next 10 years. Now, these are my estimations based on my research, okay? So if you're investing in this company, you cannot just copy uh, what I have in this spreadsheet. You need to do your own research and come up with your own conclusions about what the future growth of the company could be. But the first thing that we need to do to calculate expected return is that you need to have entered in uh, your projected growth rates, you of course need to have entered in the uh, cash flow for owners figure for um, the previous year. And if you want to learn more about how I enter in these numbers and how I do my full analysis, uh, you again, link down in the description below, it'll be that playlist that goes through uh, each of those components. But once you have that, you can head over to Google and you want to find the uh, the current stock price for the business that you're looking at. So in Facebook circumstance, we're looking at uh, a current stock price of $210 per share. Okay, so now you want to come back to the spreadsheet. And what we're going to be doing is we're going to be changing the required rate of return, this 22% figure. We're going to be changing it until the buy price in our model is equal to the current stock price. Okay, so uh, typically what I will do is I will make uh, the, the, I will pick the model that I think is the most likely outcome. So typically for me, this is the middle model. So for me, Facebook, I think that 14% is probably the most likely outcome for their growth in cash flows over the next 10 years. So what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be changing the required rate of return uh, percentage until this buy price per share is equal to $210 per share. So uh, let's change this to 18%. You can see it goes to 170. So we've got to keep going. 
And basically how this works is uh, the lower you put the required rate of return, the higher the buy price will go. So I know that I need to keep lowering the required rate of return. So we go to 16, it gets to 195. We'll keep going. We'll go to 14. Okay, if we go to 14, it goes too far. So we'll go back to 15. And you can see, well, it, it lined up perfectly. That was nice. Uh, so uh, once we've changed the required rate of return to 15%, you can see that the middle model is suggesting that the buy price is the current stock price. Okay, so what does that tell us? The way that we interpret this is that if this model is accurate, if this middle model is accurate, they do grow their cash flows at 14% per year and we invested at the current stock price, then uh, assuming no disruptions, we would likely make around a 15% return. The expected return is likely to be approximately 15%. But with that said, as I mentioned earlier, I am never looking for an expected return equal to 15%. I Because I'm targeting 15%, I'm always aiming above 15%. So uh, to give you a bit of insight into the investment that I made in late March, uh, you can come back, we can come back to the stock price here and we can see that in late March, the stock price was around $155, $160 per share. And that was the price that I made the investment back then. And back at that time, what I did was I, I did exactly what we just did now. Uh, I changed the required rate of return until the middle model uh, showed me that the buy price was equal to the current stock price. So uh, I was able to change this to around uh, 19. And I found that at the time, okay, this middle model now equals the current stock price. And that tells me that uh, at the current stock price, so this is back in March, remember, at that current stock price, my likely expected return, if this middle model was accurate, was around 19% per year. And it's not quite the 50% margin of safety that I'm looking for. So typically I'm looking to aim for a 22% return, but 19 was close enough. And I think that Facebook has uh, the characteristics of a business that has the potential to massively outperform my expectations and that the downside is relatively small for this company uh, based on my, my research. So um, as a result, I was happy with a 19% return. Uh, and of course, I compared that to some of the other businesses that I was looking to invest in. And 19% was one of the best offerings that I was able to find. Uh, and based off that, I was able to make an investment. So just to finish this video off, I want to talk about one of the main times that I'm using uh, the expected return calculation in order to make investment decisions. So uh, most commonly, I will be using the expected return uh, when there is some kind of market crash. So uh, a situation like sort of what happened in March was a case in where I was using the expected return and this is how I was using it. So of course, uh, during that period, uh, I had been allowing my cash position to build up because there was a lack of opportunities. And then very briefly in late March, I believe it was, uh, a number of the businesses that were already in my portfolio, as well as other businesses that I were just on my watch list that I wanted to invest in, a lot of their prices came down quite substantially, maybe 30% or 40% or maybe even 50% in, in some circumstances. And what I wanted to know was which of these businesses is offering me the best long-term return. So a few of the businesses I knew were in my buy range, meaning that their price was offering me a return that was first of all, above 15%, but secondly, uh, usually above 22%, which means that I had a 50% margin of safety. So a few of the businesses were in the range in which I could deploy cash. It was just a matter of which one did I want to put the most cash in uh, and which one did I want to put the least cash in or, or how did I want to, how did I want to go about sort of spreading money across those investments? So I calculated the expected return for each of them. And based on that, I was able to see okay, this business is offering me a likely long-term return of 18%. Uh, and this business is offering me a likely long-term return of 21%, or maybe it was 24%, for example. Uh, and based on that, I could figure out which businesses were offering me the best deal. And I was able to see, okay, this business isn't in my portfolio. It's offering me the best return out of all of my options available. I'm going to put a substantial amount of money into that investment. And that's basically how I use the expected return. It's about making investment decisions uh, and deciding between the different opportunities that I had in front of me. So uh, 
that's kind of how I go about using the expected return uh, in relation to the overall analysis approach. And uh, if you did enjoy this video, then let me know by please hitting the like button or hitting subscribe if you want to see more content like this. Uh, and for those who stuck around who are new to this, um, again, if you want to check out that playlist, I'll leave it linked down in the description below and you can go through. There's about 15 videos in there uh, explaining uh, each component of the analysis process that is ultimately based in Warren Buffett's principles. Um, and uh, yeah, if you have any questions, questions about this, uh, any follow-up questions or topics that you want me to cover in future videos, then uh, leave them as a comment down there and I'll be answering questions as this video goes live. Uh, but other than that, I hope you guys have a great day and I'll see you in the next one.